Hello and welcome to this, another exciting episode of the Gaming Smorgasbord. I am your host, The Camera Andy, and today I'm going to be playing Hand of Fate, an absolutely the fascinating multi-genre game? But I don't know how to explain this game in the slightest. The only real way that I can kind of explain it is a mixture of a choose-your-own-adventure game more you approach your meets... Doom. A CCG, kind of like Hearthstone, meets Batman Arkham Asylum. Yeah. Now, that's going to sound really confusing to everyone. I'm going to show you. The CCG elements are as thus, right? You have a series of cards that are in your kind of deck, and you can pick which cards you want to use during the game. Now... The number of cards in the hand dictate kind of the likelihood of them showing up. So, you know, because I have a lot of these buff cards, they're more likely to show up. You know, I have quite a few helmets in here more likely to show up. Armor, weapons, etc. They're all represented as cards. And the more of them, like I said, I have in my hand, the more likely they are to show up. Now, the same goes for encounters. So the more encounters that I have in my hand and the more varied these encounters are, the more likely they are to show up and the more likely I am to get good ones rather than bad ones. So say like the helpful priest is a very good one because he usually gives you something. Whereas something like say uh, the winding trail or bandit attack usually mean a, a combat encounter so there are varying types of cards that you can get and once again you have a bunch in reserve in your hand that you can kind of bring out so you know i could swap out say say i don't like having the winding trail say i don't want that one and instead i'd rather have the devil's wager in there there we go i've just kind of swapped those two out now when i go to play that one will be in there more likely to the show up dust is the perfect implement to so your as you can see i'm already kind of away in here i've finished the first run i wanted to kind of get there so that i could show this off so each run you kind of have three bad guys that you can defeat so the jack of dust jack of bones and queen of dust and then at the end of it you get this the goblet which increases something about your character increases stats um increases the gear and stuff like that so here, I'm already kind of halfway through this run. I just have to do the King of Dust and one more, and then I'll get the Goblet. So let's get to the the meat, the, the bread and butter, to the meat of the game here. In these lands, so the here, he's going to kind of show us the cards that will be showing up in this deck a lot. Okay, so we're going to get quite a few cards here. We've got a couple of shops couple of priests well we've got a priest and as you can see he's kind of just laying out these cards so once he's kind of done with this uh really theatrical display of like putting the cards down we'll get into kind of these cards getting laid out as a dungeon now i can move forward and i can't move further than one card so let's move over to this card the maiden okay so this is probably going to be a choose your own adventure I am Meredith of the Forest Folk. My people have long helped the mortals of this realm. What boon would you seek? Well, uh, I'm going to ask for longer life. That will give me a bonus health. So now he's going to be searching the deck for that max health card. There we go. So I get five max health. That's not too bad. And then we move on to the next one. Ambush. Right. So now we're going to get on to the... Kind of Batman Arkham Asylum part of the game. So here we go. We've got Jack of Skulls and Six Dust. So they're going to be the critters that are on the board here as we go into this Batman Arkham Asylum bit. Okay, so here's the environment. As you can see, it actually places the cards down and you come out of them. Your equipment appears as the cards are placed down. It's fantastic. Just the aesthetic, the idea of this. Now, the reason why I'm not a massive fan of uh, the Skeleton Bastard is because he can actually res his his troops. And more often than not, he's got 
bloody musketman with him. So really what I want to be doing is I really want to quickly be dealing with this guy. So here we see the, the kind of Batman Arkham Asylum side of things. What with the combat being very much about dodging, jumping, getting out of the way of stuff. Blocking occasionally maybe, Andy? Although there is not technically a block button. There is a kind of jump around and avoid being attacked button. You can also deflect incoming projectiles such as knives and daggers and the like. Which I kind of have yet to master, to be honest. So as you can see, it's doing that that whole uh, Batman Arkham Asylum thing where it'll jump you to an enemy. Uh, if, if you're like within a range of them. Which I quite like that. The only thing I could levy against this game is that the controls do not feel kind of as solid as Batman's do. It definitely feels lacking in the, the polish that Batman's controls had. Now I am using a uh, Xbox controller um, to play this and I feel like the controller is the way to play. There's no way I'd play it with anything else. I don't think a mouse and keyboard would be kind of nearly as as good. So here we have a decision. While searching the area for anything worth salvaging, you realize that one of your opponents is only pretending to be dead. So what I can do is I can go up and I can uh, kind of sneak kill them, or I can just leave. Now I'm gonna do the sneak up and kill them to show what I mean by the kind of choose your own adventure book type thing. So I'm gonna sneak up and kill them. Now this is the way that the game deals with kind of random Choose chance elements. So it within here there is one fail. So the chance of me, you know, failing is very low. I succeeded, which means I'm gonna kill him and I'm gonna gain three cards for that. Benefit. So one equipment, that gives me chains of rage, I'm gonna take that, I get ten gold, and then I get five food. So as you can see down in the uh, the bottom left hand corner there you can see that I've got health I have food and I also have gold now as I travel around you'll notice I'm push, to find my food goes down my health goes up so as long as I have food my health will go up every time I take a step you arrive at the town of Stigal on the market bay a day, day sorry some people have been known to dabble their wealth on a good day at the markets uh, ooh, the markets are selling food today. You may have some gold at the market and see how much food it's worth today. Let's do it. I, I just got some gold. A man approaches you with a sack containing the food your gold managed to secure. So here we go. We've got some massive, like 50-50 on it. But we've got huge Select failures and huge success. So I'm going to go with the last one, which is a success. Not as great as it could have been, but it could have been a lot worse, to be honest. So now he's going to flick through them. I'm going to get three food for that. Which is pretty good, that leaves me in good stead. So now we're going to move on to the next area. Now, this game is in beta, so I've noticed quite a few, like, frame rate hiccups here and there. I've kind of had it crash on me a few times. Ah, now this is another element. Whenever you get one of these cards, sometimes you'll get a token for it. Now what the token will do is that will actually give you... That will give you more cards to play with. Now, I have to succeed in this in order to get that token. So, a nobleman approaches on a chariot as you walk the streets of Stigar. He notices you and comes to a stop. You there, peasant. I wish to purchase your armor as a gift for my nephew. He's about the same build as you and enjoys a good battle on occasion. Now, in order to get this trinket, I have to sell my armor. That'll put me at a disadvantage because I won't have any armor. Or I can decline, not get my token, keep my armor. I'm going to sell my armor just for this one. Uh, the noble awaits patiently as you take off your armor and then hand it to him. You should appreciate this after I've cleaned it, of course. The dealer draws four gold gain cards. These cards token, This card token is now mine. So I get a lot of gold. Hopefully, I should get a shop sure coming up soon. So this is giving me a lot of gold. Well done. And that is now mine. So when I die, or if I succeed in this, I'll actually gain a thing. So while in the busy market town, you're approached by a shopkeeper on the verge of losing his store. I could give him 20 gold 
and he'll pay, repay me. I'm gonna do it. Many of these blessings are too good for the now, likes of you. Now, this blessing, every time when I take ten steps, I will get paid. So I've just found a shop. Hopefully, this should have some cheap armor in there. Just some that'll tide me over. Now, throughout the game, I have noticed, as you'll see here, massive graphical glitches. Like I said, this game is in beta. And the graphical glitches kind of show that. So I can't really afford any armor, really. Berserker armor would have been nice to have. But with every weapon ability usage, all bandits are stunned for three seconds, but you also earn 50% less gold. Uh, can't really afford anything. Can I sell any items here? Oh, uh, I have medium armor, actually, so that's not too bad. So I guess, actually, I didn't really lose anything uh, given in my armor, except for the good stuff. Uh, let's... No, I don't really need anything, do I? No. So, the graphical glitches, you know, they are quite numerous. You'll notice that uh, the dealer's eyes occasionally go funny. Sometimes the lighting goes a little bit weird. Things like that. It does go a little bit funny. So now we have a boss creature in the map with us. Uh, this is one of the bosses that I actually defeated before. Um, and he was kind of an easier one. I, I kind of had a struggle with one of the previous ones. Because uh, I did notice there was a bit of a difficulty spike and then a difficulty dip. Um, I'm not sure if it was because I learned a load of new stuff. Or, or if I'd had better equipment on the, that run that I did really well on. So what I'm trying to do is kind of juggle around a lot of enemies, kind of get them spread out a little bit. I am getting hit for a lot though. I should probably get out of the way of this. Now, like you just saw there, sometimes in the levels, uh, there are traps just kind of naturally floating about. These, these can be used, you know, to kill yourself. Or... Should you know you want to kill yourself, or you can use them against the enemy. Now that's the suggested way of using them. Now rats are annoying because they are like just fast. Whoop! There we go. There we go. There we go. Whoa! So as you can see, the, the combat can kind of pace up. It can get a little bit quick. So I'm going to sneak up and kill this guy. Once again, uh, one in four chance of failing. Chances of me failing this are very low. I was going to go with one then, and that would have been terrible. So I gain three cards, one equipment, fleet cuffs. That increases my speed. I get one food. And then I get to like, pick one a card, I think that was. Down, and we may see the end of this. So, as you can see, the game is is really interesting. It's kind of got this... Oh, I missed what that does. I cannot fault your choice. Right, okay. Though I wonder you approach the tall spire that shines with magical energy. Tactics. I will enter the tower. As soon as your hand touches the cold iron doors, the mages are alerted to your presence. Ah, okay. That's fine. So, two mages. I've never dealt with mages before. Oh, what's this? Mage. Okay, so this must be a boss guy. So let's deal with him quickly. I feel like these mages are going to be ranged, so... As you can see them, I actually uh, deflected a little bit of this guy's attack. He's actually shielding against my attack now. Bloody hell, this is hard, man. Am I actually doing any damage to these guys? Oh, nice. Okay, I think I know how I kill them. Alright, come on. One of you do it. Come on, one of you do it. One of you do it. Come on. You're doing it. Nice. Nice. Alright. What the doozy. This feels hella unfair. Alright, let's do this again. Don't know how that much damage that's doing, though. So, as you can see, I'm kind of bouncing their attacks back a little bit. 
kind of get on an angle to him. There we go. So I feel like this is kind of the way I got to do this. I kind of got to bounce these attacks back at him. I'd rather not though, because this is hella annoying. But I am losing a lot of health if I kind of try and deal with them uh, on a 1-1 basis. I want to get on an angle to him. Ah, shit. This isn't going so well. I might just die. I haven't killed any of these guys yet. Kind of want to deal with one of these guys at least. Oh, shit. Alright. Jump. Bash. Okay, that was terrible. There we go. Found it. Found that rhythm. Okay, dealt with one. Oh, jeez. Die. Die, 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 die. Die a little bit. Oh, fuck. What? I thought I killed you. Nice. I killed that one. Now I've got 29 health. I kind of really am hoping for a shop. Really want a shop. Your prize. So I get the card token because I won that. And I, I also now know what that does. Transgressions there. Okay, so I got 34 health, but I'm gonna be fighting six plague rats. Alright. Alright, I think we can do this. I reckon we can do this. Okay, this will be my last one, and then I will sign this quick look off with a kind of summation of my feelings of how this uh, how this game is. And whether or not I think it's worth picking up. Okay, let's go ahead and... Let's see if I can do this without getting hit. Come on. Oh, I got hit. I got hit for one, though. I was much better than what I was doing before. Okay, so that has been Hand of Fate. A really fascinating beta game uh, currently available on Steam. Also in a Humble Bundle. I completely forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video. It's available in a Humble Bundle, which uh, is Humble Bundle and Extra Credits have kind of joined forces to bring a kind of games you may not have tried or are very interesting games in a bundle that you can buy for quite cheap. This is one of the games that are really, really worth it. This game is freaking interesting in every way possible and it's so well done. It's just worth picking up. Like I said though, it is in a beta stage so it's a little finicky in places. Like you'll see here the lighting isn't quite right. It kind of occasionally the frame rate drops and really dips hard. Uh, it's crashed for me a few times. Some of the visuals are a little bit off. Stuff like that. But other than that, this is, without a doubt, one of the most interesting games I've played for a very long time. I would really, really suggest anybody who, who's looking at this right now going, I don't know, just try it. You'll love it. If you don't know, it's probably your type of game. And it's the only game that I can kind of say that has come close to replicating Batman's combat style within a CCG slash choose your own adventure game. Which is something you can only ever say once, really. So, I've been Andy, you've been awesome, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Goodbye.